Live from Midtown Atlanta in Studio V, it's the fifth annual Starters Awards Show. It's the Starty! Now, here is your host, Kristen Ledlow. Good evening and welcome to the Starties. I'm your host, Kristen Ledlow. And it is hard to believe that this is already the fifth annual Starters Award Show. It seems like just yesterday that LeBron James was the best player in the league and superheroes were box office gold. So I guess nothing really has changed. But over the next hour, we're going to be handing out all the major awards from Rookie of the Year to Most Valuable Player. Plus, we'll pick winners in a few special categories like Meme of the Year and Funniest Moment. But you can't have the starties without the starters. So here they are, Skeets, Tass, Trey, and Lee, gentlemen. Thank you, Kristen. It is nice to have the true fifth starter back <laughs> for the fifth annual Starties. Finally. Yes. <laughs> it's been really such a long road. It. We really appreciate it. All right. I want to remind everyone how the scoring is going to work for the major NBA awards. We had an impartial panel pick the four nominees. We then all made our votes, as did you, the Starters fans on Twitter. Whoever has the most number one votes gets the prize. We got a whole lot of hand hardware to hand out tonight. So let's get to our first award. Back to Kristen. So what is a rookie? Is it a player playing their first season regardless of when they were drafted? Yes, but should it be? Also, yes, these are the nominees for Rookie of the Year. Kyle Kuzma of the Los Angeles Lakers. Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers. And Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics. And the winner is Ben Simmons. The Aussie! Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 Ben Simmons, <laughs> the 76ers rookie. It's a two-man race, let's be honest. It's Simmons, it's Mitchell. Who do you like in the end? All of us, including the Starters fans, going with Ben Simmons. 57% of the vote going to Simmons, 35% to Mitchell. We all agree. It doesn't doesn't matter if he's not a true rookie. He gets <laughs> yeah. the award. Uh, it, that didn't factor in for me whatsoever. As Kristen said, yeah, he's playing his first season. That's totally fine with me. It's almost unfair, I, I think, for other other guys because he's huge and, <laughs> and he uses his size to that advantage. Other guys just can't do as much as him. I I think he's almost in that category of guys that utilize their size that are too big for their position. Hmm. Not that he's Shaq or LeBron, but he's you know, veering into that category of everybody else is smaller than him. He can just do so much. I'm just glad we had a serious race this this year. Last year, it was kind of hard to tell who was actually going to be Rookie of the Year. We had Embiid and Sarge, who were both good for kind of half the season, and Malcolm Brogdon, who was solid for an entire season. This year, we got two guys in Simmons and Mitchell, who look like they're going to be stars yeah. in the future. Mm. And for me, Simmons won kind of convincingly. Definitely, Mitchell has him on the scoring. But if you're talking about total points generated, that goes towards Simmons, too. And then TPG. Can, TPG, exactly, Tass. Plus, you factor in all the defense and just the passing that Ben Simmons brings. I think he's just... A cut above Ben or above Donovan Mitchell, barely. It's uh, funny that he missed the year before, but it didn't take him any time to find his way in the NBA. In his fourth game, he posted a triple double, had 38 double doubles this year, 12 triple doubles, which was incredible, really. Yeah. He never hit the rookie wall either. In fact, he got stronger as the season went on. When Joel Embiid went down towards the end of the season, we wondered if the Sixers might tail off a little bit instead. They didn't miss a beat. They kept up that winning streak. So, incredible season. Donovan Mitchell was incredible as well this year. Any other year, he's probably going to romp this award, but uh, yes. just not this year. Yeah, I think what's important too is it maybe have been closer to me if the Sixers were, let's say, like a 500 team, but right. they're not. And I know they got Joel Embiid, and he was there for a good chunk of the season, but Simmons was instrumental on both ends of the floor. You said it there, Trey. He gives you some defense. That's a 52-win team. Yeah. I mean, this isn't a 500 team just sneaking in here. Jazz were good. So were the Sixers. So you can't even sort of decide on that factor. Oh, Mitchell's team won more. It's not the case. Yeah. yeah, he's in the West, but they won 52 games, and that's pretty impressive. So in the end, they're both very likely going to be stars, superstars in this league, which is very exciting. A little different than a guy that played 31 sure. games last year in Embiid and a guy that scored 10 points per <laughs> game. Third we were season trying to too, decide. Joel Embiid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in the end, we say Simmons. Uh, some people out there are going to say Mitchell. Let's hear from you guys on Twitter, hashtag the starters, with, uh, well, all of your votes. What we got right, what we got wrong. Let's get to the next award, though. 
They say the best defense is a good offense. But who are they? What do they know? Here's the nominees for Defensive Player of the Year. Joel B of the Philadelphia 76ers. Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors. And Al Horford of the Boston Celtics. And the winner is Rudy Gobert. The Frenchman, Rudy Gobert, taking Defensive Player of the Year here in the Starties. This is an international game. And the Stifle Tower was kind enough to send in this acceptance speech. Shout out to the Starters for voting me Defensive Player of the Year once again, back to back. Hopefully this year I get to win the real award. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, Rudy remembers. We did all vote for him last year. He didn't ultimately take the uh, hardware home with him, but he got a starty in the end, so it's all good. Uh, the fans agree. 62% of you saying Gobert, despite you know, missing about a third of the season because of a number of injuries, still did enough and impacted the Jazz defense enough to win this award. Do you agree? Yeah, I totally agree. This is an award that gives a narrative uh, a kind of a nod, so that's why he didn't get it last year. He just he just didn't have the story around sure. him. This year he does, uh, because he took a sort of a middling jazz team and he propped them right back up. And I like this award because it's still a bit impervious to stats, right? Because we can't look at stats and say, oh, this guy's a very good defensive player. The stats that are available to us, you, you just aren't able to really gauge how great a guy is. The teams have some crazy databases out there, but Rudy Gobert, I think, by far and away, you watch the game, he was the best guy this year. When he came back in January, the Jazz was struggling, and they wrapped, wrapped 30 and 8 since then. A lot of that was to do with his presence on the floor defensively. Definitely. Jazz have the second best defense in the league. When he's on the floor, they have the best defense they in the league. They run away with it. Exactly. So his presence is just incredible. The impact he has on their team is incredible. And it allows their other players to be aggressive on the perimeter, knowing that Rudy's there back waiting for them. So I'm glad he won this award. Also, some of the other guys, Kawhi Leonard, he obviously didn't play this year, uh, and Draymond Green. He just wasn't as effective as he's been in years gone by. Did When you voted for Gobert, did it come into the idea of that Embiid also missed some time? Like, if, if Embiid had played 80 games, would he have done enough to you with Gobert missing a third of that season? Or is because Embiid also missed about 19 or 20 games, did that come into play at all? Oh, definitely. I would have been voting for Embiid if he never took a shoulder to the face from Markel Fultz. I thought that his impact was similar to Rudy Gobert's yeah. impact. He was just going to have Gobert on minutes, but then once... Embiid went down for the end of the season. It turns out to be about three extra games that Joel Embiid is playing, just 100 minutes really. And right. when that's the case, that's pretty negligible. And I think that Gobert has been the single best defensive player in the league this year. He's the Jazz MVP, so that's where my vote went. Mm -hmm. All right, two sweeps so far in the starties, but let's go on to our next award. Kristen, back to you. Thanks to giant TVs, league pass, and the internet, some say there's no reason to go to an NBA game. Good luck being nominated for Fan of the Year sitting on your couch tweeting at me. Guys, take us through the year's nominees. Yes, the nominees for Fan of the Year will start with the teen who just doesn't want to check the second <laughs> Gosh, Dad, I'm trying to watch the game. Stop. <laughs> How many times did he try that? This nominee, John Stewart, sitting courtside as JaVale McGee bangs home a fadeaway. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were all thinking. Yeah, exactly. How the heck did that just happen? <laughs> also sums up the Knicks season. Yeah, right. for sure. Well, great camera work, too. What? Our third nominee. It's the fidget spinner kid down at the Fortress here in Atlanta. <laughs> he just knows where the camera is. He knows he's on the Jumbotron, and man, can he spin. What a spin! On the forehead. <laughs> Still going! Yep. Our last nominee, these ladies that love Lou Williams. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Oh, easy, ladies. Oh, oh my. <laughs> and then I'm going to look at her friend. Watch so your bad. friend on the left. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No risque. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is John Stewart. Oh, John yeah. Stewart gets oh. fan of the year. Bit of an upset, if you ask me. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> a great reaction, and like Taz said, yeah, JaVale McGee hits a turnaround fading jumper. Unbelievable. Well, coming up, the award for sixth man and the year's best wedgie. Don't go away.
The Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Welcome back to The Starties. As the famous Beatles song goes, I get by with a little help from my bench. I'm going to try with a little help from my bench. And that Ringo always knew what he was talking about. Here's the nominees for Sixth Man of the Year. Wayne Ellington of the Miami Heat. Eric Gordon of the Houston Rockets. Fred Van Fleet of the Toronto Raptors. And Lou Williams of the Los Angeles Clippers. And the winner is Lou Williams. Sweet Lou wins the Starties Sixth Man of the Year Award. Going back to back here with the Starties. We also voted for him last year. The super sub guys, everybody voting for him. Fans included 59% of the vote. Finished the year averaging a career high 22.6 points and a 57.4 true shooting, shooting percentage. Impressive, impressive stuff. He ran away with this one unanimously. No debates. Nothing at all. No. He uh, won it. He could have been an all star. Mm -hmm. He yep. was better than a lot of team starters. And you said uh, that it's a career high for him. He's the most improved candidate for me mm. at 31 years old. He won a lot of games for, uh, for the Clippers by himself, just coming out there, hitting those incredible shots. I remember against the Golden State Warriors when Steve Kerr said, Lou might go for 50 tonight, and he did. I mean, <laughs> that was the type of season yeah. that he had. He was just unstoppable, and he was consistent. He was doing everything. So uh, pretty well-deserved. And, and, you know, the fact that we all agreed and the fans agreed as well, I think shows that everyone noticed uh, his impact that he had. Yeah, pretty much the best bench scoring ever. The complaint you would say is maybe we don't need the sixth man of the year coming from a 10 seed, but imagine where the Clippers would be mm. if they didn't have yeah. Lou Williams. They would have been in the tank race. They wouldn't have even been pushing for the playoffs in the final month of the season to see what he did and the way he played. Only starting 19 games this year. It seems like he started way more, but he didn't. He was just out there lighting it up. That's why he was so good. Lou is a no-brainer, but I so wanted to throw a vote at Fred Van Vliet. Because a vote for Van Vliet, to me, is a vote for the entire Raptors bench. And this was one of the most impressive squads, five-man lineups, in the entire NBA. And I'm talking Van Vliet, of course, DeLon Wright, CJ Miles, Siakam, and Pirtle. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Pirtle. They were that incredible this year. So to me, like a little bit, like voting for Van Vliet would have been a vote for that entire Raptors bench. Hey, man, this I wonder is a if fake we... award show. Let's make a fake <laughs> yeah, award I, mean, next I wonder, year. I wonder <laughs> if we should start to consider having some sort of like entire bench award instead of mm. just an individual award. I, I, I think it's in play. Yeah, but then the bad teams who are bad starters oh. would, would get some award. Because That's sometimes true. you get you go, like the Lakers of last year, they yeah. go 10, 11 deep because their starting five aren't that it's great. It's a good point. It's yeah. a good point. Something to think about. Anyways, right. the Blue Raptors were amazing. They were indeed. All right, let's get to our next award. Blobs and slobs, icing the pick and roll. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Coaching is hard and so is Contra. These four are the nominees for Coach of the Year. Wayne Casey of the Toronto Raptors. Mike D'Antoni of the Houston Rockets. Quinn Snyder of the Utah Jazz. And Brad Stevens of the Boston Celtics. And the winner is Coach Dwayne Casey. Ooh, oh. interesting. Dwayne Casey, coach of the Toronto Raptors, gets this award, and here's Coach to accept the hardware. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to my fellow Canadians. I'm sure there's no bias in this whatsoever, but I appreciate all the support you guys gave us throughout the year. Uh, we still have a ways to go, but I think it's a big ways from 22 and 60 versus whatever we end up tonight. Uh, the big turnaround. So thank you so much. It's a team effort. I've got great assistant coaches, great players, great organization. So it's a total team effort. But uh, thank you so much, guys. Well, this is going to blow Coach Casey's mind. <laughs> the two Canadians, <laughs> Cass and myself, we didn't vote for Coach Casey. Trey Lee and the fans, 34%, a very, very tight race, voted for Casey, and that's why he gets the win. And Cass and I, we go with Brad Stevens, the Quinn Snyder. But finally, an you award guys are here. Too polite. Finally, an award here, though, we, that we can sort of debate. And there's some, actually a number of guys. I mean, we only had four nominees. I think we could have made it eight or nine deep. 
Why, Coach Casey, let's let you guys go first in the end. Well, first off, in that acceptance speech, he said credit to his uh, staff and the organisation. But it starts with him because Dwayne Casey's been on the hot seat almost every season yeah. in the last couple of years when the Raptors have flamed out of the play... Well, not flamed out, but when their playoffs have ended. And he knew he had to make adjustments and changes. And they made more adjustments than any other team this year. He got his two stars to buy into the fact that they need to spread the ball around. He improved their bench depth. He trusted his bench. And look at the results. 59 wins, franchise franchise record, top seed in the Eastern Conference, uh, still a good chance to make the NBA Finals. So I think Dwayne Casey realised they needed to make some changes. They did that and they were really effective and that's why I chose him for Coach of the Year. Yeah, this award often goes to a coach whose team exceeded expectations and the Raptors definitely did that but like Lee's saying, it's in a different way. They brought back almost their entire same team but they look totally different. Not to mention, as we mentioned earlier, the bench has been great. That is a lot of Dwayne Casey as well, empowering those guys, letting yeah. them grow in their roles, putting them in the right places, and then getting the buy-in from Lowry and DeRozan to really turn the team over to be more of a team than just those two guys. Those are all major things in coaching. This is a one-year award, but this is kind of three or four years, really, That's for right. Dwayne Casey. Yeah. And coming into the season, it seemed clear what the Raptors were, right? For sure. Uh, a couple guys who are isolation players, who are going to take jump shots. And if that's what they were, you know, I mentioned last year that maybe – they should change their coach because he had six seasons with them and they weren't changing. Yeah. And a lot of people, as you said, they were on the hot seat. And then Dwayne Casey went and made those changes. He went and visited his players in May and June. And during that trip, he visited Damari Carroll here in Atlanta and he came on our show. <laughs> and as we were taking our photo post-show in our little corner, as we do with all of our guests, he said to me, listen, I heard you say that the Raptors could use a coaching change. But I just wanted you to know that I like your show, so that's why we came on it. And that's why everybody, <laughs> and that's why everybody loves Dwayne Casey. Yeah. He's a very respected guy, and everybody did buy in mm -hmm. to his new system. So why'd you go with Stevens? Well, I think, <laughs> it, it's all, first of all, case. we needed a debate. We needed some time. To talk. We've already flown through the A block. <laughs> We're flying through this B block. They're all unanimous. At first, I was with Dwayne. But it's all how you look at it. it is, is it teaching old dogs new tricks right. or teaching new dogs some new tricks because the Celtics <laughs> four returning players that's it yeah and they have the best offense in the league or best defense in the league excuse me and they were battling with the Raptors for the one seed until the last couple weeks that is ridiculously impressive to me so it you know without Gordon Hayward without Kyrie Irving for most of it yeah it's a coin flip to me for these two guys but Quinn Snyder a lot of guys. Well, yeah, I mean, there's I mean, basically the, like 12 guys you could have given this. The, the Celtics survived the loss of Gordon Hayward. So did the Jets, losing him in yeah. free agency. And we've already talked about Gobert not being there for a good chunk of the season. Donovan Mitchell, who no one expected this from. I think some of that's got to go to Quinn Snyder, handing the offensive keys to him, to a rookie, and saying, go get us some buckets. But they yeah. also moved the ball. That's the other part of the beauty about this team. They led the league in uncontested looks. That ball's zipping around there. They got Joe Ingles, the greatest Australian right. since Lee Ellis. <laughs> Rubio can suddenly shoot. So that's why I knew Casey was going to win this thing in the end. So I wanted to throw a little love to Quinn Snyder. <laughs> Television yeah, tricks. So. Television yeah, tricks. Yeah, I exactly. mean, someone like uh, Brad, uh, Brett Stevens, uh, Brett, Stevens uh, Brett Brown in Philadelphia, <laughs> yeah. they routed off 16 wins to end the season. If he'd done that a little bit earlier, maybe that's that would have uh, put him into it. But he oh, there's of, tons. Popovich, yeah. I think, could be in the mix. D'Antoni with having the best record still. Nate Terry McMillan. Stotts with the Blazers. Yeah. Nate McMillan. They thought, a lot of people thought the Pacers were going to be 25 wins. Yeah. It's the year Tons of coaches. Of here. It really is. <laughs> Thank God there was something to debate here. <laughs> this year's stories. Let's go to our next award, though. The world moves fast. That's why we celebrate the wedgie. It's a special moment when the ball sticks, time stops, babies smile, flowers bloom. Tass, why don't you take us through the four nominees for wedgie of the year? That was beautiful, Kristen. First nominee, <laughs> Russell Wedgebrook. <laughs> Shoves that one. He's coming out of bounds. Lefty. Uh, Shoved it in from underneath. That's a rare one. Second nominee, that wedgie was defensive. Oh! Whoa! Let the bodies in yeah. the floor. The Miami <laughs> Heat playing some D. That's nice. Wedging it in there real low. Third nominee, Royal Wedgie, because it's LeBron. Star Ooh. power. Star wedgie. power. Yeah. 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 Star power. That's yeah. 15th yeah. year. We're biased. And this last nominee, we just wanted to hear our name. This is a starter's shout out. Oh. Got to give credit to the starter. If you've seen that show on NBA TV, they call that a wedgie. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's for you guys. 61, it's a, it's a great little nickname for that. Yeah, it is. And the winner is, not Wessel, Russell Wedgebrook. <laughs> Russell Wedgebrook, what? Hey, this one won? He was wustling on this play. Yeah. <laughs> he got in there. Does he get a rebound on that play, I wonder? 
Uh, yeah, maybe it was sort of a shot attempt. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I know. It's <laughs> highly debatable. Should yeah. we debate it like yeah, the coaches? Yeah, I guess we should. We're at 36 <laughs> wedgies on the season. We were at 46 last oh, year man, when we hurts. got to 50 and had that record year. It's not going to happen this year, unfortunately. Oh, we got the playoffs, Tass. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Either Come way, on, either way, stick with us here. Coming up, the award that no one wants. It's the worst of the year. Stick with us. That's oh, amazing. yeah. Mm. Definitely did. Welcome back to the Starties. We have already handed out six awards, but there's still plenty to come, including most valuable player. Well, while you're busy losing at HQ trivia, the starters are scouring the internet to bring you the meme team, the NBA's weirdest and wackiest moments. And yes, their data plans are incredible. Guys, take us through the nominees for Meme of the Year. Our first nominee, LeBron, way back in November, posting this cryptic photo of a fist from the cartoon mm -hmm. Arthur. What does it mean, LeBron? Why are you always putting fists up? Well, we asked the king himself, and this is what he said. I like Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he likes Arthur. It's a great cartoon. Well, all the other calves got in on the hashtag mood, posting Arthurs. And then after a particularly great game against the Hornets, Cassidy Hubberth, she followed up. How would you describe your mood, LeBron, in this game? Uh... You know, there might be a couple Arthurs going out tonight. <laughs> couple Arthurs going out tonight. And yes, the memes, they started coming. We are all witnesses to Great Arthur. Next nominee, the Rockets and Clippers battle. After it, the Rocks reportedly tried to crash the Clippers locker room <laughs> using supposed secret tunnels. Ooh. Oh, you know the internet went crazy for these secret tunnels. Always sunny. Indiana Jones. Shawshank. <laughs> Home Alone, what's the plan here? Let's, let's figure this out. Die Hard. Yeah. And the uh, famous DeAndre Jordan chair. <laughs> this was a great night on the internet. Yeah. Our third nominee for Meme of the Year, Clay Thompson, he's a human meme. He got started early when he was over in China. Yes, China Clay was a thing. Missing dunks, going crazy in the club. Oh man, what a year he's had. <laughs> Eating some sort of maybe dumpling here out of dry ice like crazy. And then he was asked about his thoughts on scaffolding while he was out on the streets. I usually observe if the, if the piping and stuff is new. Or it's, if sometimes, you know, something looks like it's been there a while, I kind of try to avoid that. Yeah, avoid the scaffolding. It takes great photos. Man, Clay, what a year. Oh, yeah. Especially All-Star yeah. Weekend. What are you thinking about? You thinking about Rocco, Clay? Probably. Oh, yeah, he loves Rocco. Here he is at Steph's 30th oh, birthday man. party, getting down, taking off his shoe. I think I'd watch him dance for <laughs> yeah. three oh, hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, recently, getting the slam cover. <laughs> Someone says it looks like you asked an 11-year-old what he thought would be cool. <laughs> or it's similar to a high school athlete getting ready for senior picks. Looks great. That is cruel. And so was this, our last nominee, James Harden, dropping Wesley Johnson and staring at him seemingly forever. Mm. Sparked some memes, of course, so many memes, starting with Black Panther. Mm -hmm. This twister Photoshop <laughs> Wesley on that Left floor. Blue foot. <laughs> when you get crossed into the astral plane. <laughs> oh, AI stepping Ooh. over, oh, that's mean. And lastly, thanks to this Twitter account that sets basketball plays to the famous scene in Titanic. A Trevor <laughs> oh, Celine. Oh, beautiful. Wesley, man. It is All memorable. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable? All memeable, yeah. The winner is King Arthur. Yeah. Oh. Not angry with this. Nah. Star power. <laughs> no, this was this was a story for like a good two weeks there. Oh back man, in yeah. <laughs> Does he actually like Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Wow. So congrats to LeBron James, the entire Cavs organization, <laughs> and Arthur mm. for winning the it's meme been of the year. Been a year year for Arthur. It for sure. really has. How is he an aardvark? Doesn't make sense. <laughs> Doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> moving <laughs> on. Moving on to our next award. Who has two thumbs and loves Austin Powers? That guy, but the Aussie also loves the fundamental plays of the game, good ball movement, solid teamwork, just as much as he does 
love the fat bastard. So here is <laughs> the Lili nominees for very solid play of the year. Take us through it, Lee. Yeah, the first one comes from the Utah Jazz, and it is a beauty out in the desert here. Look at the ball just fizzing around. Everyone gets a touch. That's what I like about it. Here it goes, still going. Wow! wow. Finishes with a dunk, dunk, but it's a gentle dunk, that's okay. Yeah, out in true. the desert again, and you couldn't have a very solid play of the year nominee without the San Antonio Spurs. So and it's Pau Gasol with a Shane Warne leggy, Woo. through to Bryn Forbes, through a layup. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> uh, the Denver Nuggets have just been fantastic this year, moving the ball around, beautiful to watch. Leaving it here for Gary Harris, a wide open swish bomb. bomb. And the Boston Celtics, another team that really knows how to move the ball around. Here is a boomerang over to Marcus Morris. He knocks it in, also for a swish bomb. But the winner of the very solid play of the year is the Utah Jazz for that beautiful one against the Phoenix Suns. Everyone gets involved. Pump fake party. Wow. Finishes with a nice shot. And Ricky Rubio from the Jazz is on hand to accept the award. Well, fellas, thank you for the very solid play of the year. It means a lot. This team moved the ball, and uh, we play as a team, and it means a lot to us. Thank you. Gracias, amigo. Uh, now, we're not done yet because, as always, we have the stats compiled by Kaushik out in Melbourne, okay. Australia. These are the teams with the number of very solid plays, as uh, you can see. Sure. Oh, yeah, you spread the love around. Yeah, I do. Hey, it's Thanks. not me. I always tell you, I don't pick the very solid play. <laughs> it picks me. And, oh. of course, there's one other graphic we need <laughs> to see. Except Atlanta. Atlanta's not on there. <laughs> they didn't pick it once. <laughs> the most important graphic is, does Skeets like? Uh, well. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, no reaction actually wins this year, but uh, at least there's more yeses than <laughs> yeah, no's. <yeah>. So. <laughs> I think I've started to wear you down finally. You just nah, no longer we just don't usually have a lot of time at the end of the show. <laughs> That's also I told true, my yeah. ear to hurry it up so I can't tell you how angry I am with your very solid play of the year. A little controversial, I will say, uh, a very solid play ending in a dunk, though. Let's yes, be honest. that's true, but it is a high percentage basket. So uh, considering that what led up to that play, I decided it wasn't a thunderous dunk. It wasn't jamming. There was anybody. a Spurs bounce pass for a layup I sitting know, right there. And he said, no, no, no. I know, but oh, I had to give it to the Jazz. The Jazz, jazz have been great this year. Right, been a well, great season for them. Congrats to Rubio and I the Jazz. I guess we got some time to fill today. Very <laughs> now let's keep it going here. Let's get over to our next award. Kristen. It's time to hand out that honor that is not actually an honor at all. Worst of the year. Best of luck not winning to these four nominees. Tess, you're probably the meanest. Why don't you handle this? <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. First nominee, <laughs> Bobby Portis. He was mean, sending his teammate Nikola Miritich to the hospital. Portis punched Miritich in the face during practice, breaking two of his bones and giving him a concussion. Next nominee, Jason Kidd for his end of game strategies. Fouling up four with 10 seconds left. That's a weird one. Bold. Just let him shoot. <laughs> or how about this one here? Ordering a missed free throw up three with 1.4 seconds left, giving the Cavs an opportunity at the very least to tie the game. Why not just go up four? Another strange one from Jason Kidd. Next nominee, this is a doozy. Eric Bledsoe, as the Suns were imploding, firing their coach, he tweeted, I don't want to be here, but claimed it had nothing to do with the team. He said he was at a salon while his wife was getting her hair did and he had enough of being there. Mm, not <laughs> buying it. Last nominee, J.R. Smith. A previous winner of this award, this time for throwing soup <laughs> at an assistant coach. At Damon Jones, he threw soup at his coach, Supreme Ha. Uh, he was suspended one game for firing soup wow. at his coach. <laughs> firing soup. The winner, or Loser is Eric Bledsoe. Mm. Wow. Just one tweet, Eric. One tweet yeah. all it takes. from the salon. We'll do it. That's all it takes. Wow, the season had only just started as well, and he's taken home this award. Mm. And we didn't even mention the punctuation. Let us raise <laughs> the banner. Yeah. Join I mean, do we what? clap? I can never I can never remember if we're supposed to clap at this. No, I don't think so. No, mm. just be sad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, it worked. It did, yeah. It did work. Got him out of there. Got him out of there. He went from the worst team in the league to the playoffs. And this is already a legendary tweet. Also kind of best of the year. That's true. All right. We got lots more still to come. And a great Photoshop from Trey. Let's hope you want to be here. After the jump, we're going to keep handing out the hardware. We got the award for funniest moment of the year. Please let it be Barf Lady. Please let it be Barf Lady. Barf Lady. Please let it be Barf Lady. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Starties. The 
Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Starties. To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. This season, four players got a little closer to perfection. Here's your nominees for most improved player. Clint Capella of the Houston Rockets. Spencer Dinwiddie of the Brooklyn Nets. Victor Oladipo of the Indiana Pacers. And Lou Williams of the LA Clippers. And the winner is... Victor Oladipo. Yeah, no surprise here. Oladipo of the Pacers winning the Starties for most improved player. And before we get to the voting breakdown, Oladipo kind enough to send in this acceptance speech. What's up everybody, this is Victor Oladipo. Just want to give a special thank you to the starters. I want to be the most improved player this year. Thank you to my teammates, my coaching staff, my family. I give God all the glory, all the honor and the praise. Hopefully I continue to keep it further. Peace. <laughs> Looking mad sharp there, oh, Oladipo. Yeah. Picking up his starty for most improved. There's five Oladipos right there. Unanimous. <laughs> Though 83% of the fans also go in with Oladipo. Not a shock, I guess. I mean, took the Pacers to the fifth best record in the East. We already talked about how much of a surprise that was. And he not only upped his points per game and obviously what he was doing on that end of the floor, but kept the efficiency. And I think that's sort of important with this award, right? And shocking that you would be able to keep your efficiency yeah. shooting more. And, uh, you know, I guess it was the Russell Westbrook effect. Just leaving Definitely. Russ and having that that new confidence that he could be the guy. And he said as much that Russell gave him that sort of new lease on life and being feathery, as Victor said. <laughs> it wasn't just putting up numbers on a bad team. It turned into wins and it turned the yeah. team into a good team and, you know, into the playoffs, which a lot of people thought coming into the season the pace was going to drop out. But he put this team on his shoulder and made the all-star team as well. So he got that recognition from, from, the, from the coaches. And uh, he was just fantastic all year. Season well deserved. Yeah, career highs across the board. And it's the kind of case that can actually get you excited about the most improved player. It's not a guy in his second or third year just getting a ton more minutes and right. instantly getting better. He had a totally new body, too, a totally new game. Tass mentioned it. He took things from Westbrook. He just looked like a totally different player. He was awesome this year, and he was fun to watch. He's going to he's, he's warrant some All-NBA consideration, yeah. I think, at the guard position, as well as uh, some All-Defensive uh, is, is, sure. is a possibility as well. And I like where this award, everyone knows my, uh, my history with this award. I don't generally like it. But at least now where we've gotten to it is the guy that's a good player making that sort of superstardom leap uh, with Oladipo, Giannis mm -hmm. the year before, a couple other guys that McCollum. they're going into that. Yeah, McCollum is a great one. I like that. I'm not as angry at that instead of just the guy that got a bunch more minutes or the guy that was just a second or third year player. Yeah, you're supposed to get better. That Sounds like sense. you've improved too. <laughs> I've improved in, in liking this award. All right, yeah, let's well get done. to our next award. Back to Kristen. Hilarious, but how <laughs> hilarious is the NBA? We saw this clip of the Hornets mascot dressed as Han Solo get hit with a ball right there in the Hibberts. And oh, it doesn't oh. even make the cut for <laughs> funniest wow. moment of the season. Guys, who are the four funny nominees? Well, we've heard of the frozen envelope in NBA lore. What about the frozen water bottle? <laughs> Coach Lou just trying to get a sip. I love the first check. Like, is this just really yeah. cold? Yeah. Take it out of the freezer, guys. Let it thaw a little bit. <laughs> How about Chris Stapps for oh. getting it right in the face? Right in the Hibberts oh. with Hugo and right in the face. Oh, the Always funny. Oh. Oh, man. It's like that soccer shot. Yeah. And the... Blue acapella performance Yo, listen, uh, here's a <laughs> at the Wolves Pelicans game. <laughs> oh man, this is good. A sweet oh, rendition. Oh, I could be the conductor if that's all you have to do. <laughs> just wave your arms like that if you get this sort of a performance. I think you can sing it too, Lee. <laughs> I mean, he's committed to Look at to the it. energy he's got. Yep. In arena, it sounded un acapella ish. Oh. I think. I mean, right. we're the flutes. You can yeah, hear the I'm not hearing the flutes. Yeah, we're not hearing the two lane band. Right, you're right. Last nominee is uh, Fergie's performance at All Star Weekend, singing the national anthem. Ooh. <laughs> Fergie was giving it a try. She loves her country, Pass. That's what she said. That's exactly right. Uh, see, I love, I love the reaction yeah. to all the guys. That yeah. to me they're is the, fun, that's the funny part. Yeah. Yes. They're trying to play it cool. 
<laughs> Jimmy. It's not for Jimmy. You want Fergie to do the anthem. You got Fergie doing the anthem, yeah. and the winner is Fergie's Oh, <laughs> Fergie! Funniest moment. The interesting rendition yeah, of the yeah, Star Spangled yeah, Banner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is already an all-time all-star moment. We're always going to talk about it when this year's all-star comes up. And like you guys are saying, the reactions are, yeah. <laughs> are the best part, really. Bring her back next year. Let her Give do her a it chance. Again. Yeah. You'd like to see it go again? Yeah, why not? Why not? She just and remember at the end she just said, "Let's play some basketball." That's <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Can't be angry with that. All right. Congrats to Fergie on winning the oh, no funniest moment speech of from the year. No, she wasn't available. Ah oh, man. I'm sorry. Do you know someone we should have no, contacted? I just would have loved her to get up there and uh, said thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, say thanks. We got to go back to Kristen, and quite frankly, this next part we're, we're sort of we're sort of dreading. Well, like every NBA season, there are highs and lows, good and bad, wedgies and air balls. So please, grab a tissue. Join Skeets, Tass, Trey, and Lee as they say goodbye to this season's dearly departed. Promises you would stay Promises of yesterday That you'd be here forever Now I can't hold you near Memories disappear Cause we can't be together They say Forget about the past Cause nothing good can last But I can't say goodbye to you Just like a dream that you won't let die Like a prayer that you can't deny Oh, I miss you When the night falls and you can't hold on When you hope but you know it's gone I miss you Never been laid so low Having trouble letting go Holding on to the feeling Never gonna turn my back Never gonna fade to black Never gonna stop believing Forget about the past Cause nothing good can last But I can't say goodbye to you Just like a dream that you won't let die Like a prayer that you can't deny Oh, I miss you When the night falls and you can't hold on When you hope but you know it's gone Oh, I miss you Oh, I miss you Welcome back to the Starties, where it's time for the granddaddy of them all. This season, a guy named James is definitely winning MVP, but is it Harden or LeBron? The beard or the brawn? Only time will tell. So these are the nominees for most valuable player. Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans. James Harden of the Houston Rockets. LeBron James of the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
Damian Lillard of the Portland Trailblazers. And the winner is James Harden. James Harden, not LeBron James, mm. wins the starties for most valuable player. Came down to these two. The real one's going to come down to these two. Ultimately, everybody here at the desk, including the Starters fans on Twitter, going with the beard. 66% of the vote in that Twitter poll going with James Harden. Got a little closer as the season went on there. Sure. LeBron came on like crazy at the end. But uh, in the end, you think you're looking at the entire body of work from James Harden and the record, I'm sure, comes into play with the Rockets. And that's why you're going towards the bearded one. Yeah, and I think voters will too because he's got the story. Okay. Team best record. He is the leading scorer in the NBA. And he was the beards made twice. Right. Coming up <laughs> second. So all that adds up to, yeah, we're going to give it to him this time. You think that trumps the narrative of LeBron, hey, I'm doing this in my 15th season. Hey, I've had basically two different teams when Kyrie was shipped out during the summer and then we got rid of half of our team halfway through the season. You think that trumps it? Yeah, the wins is the biggest thing. Okay. I think yeah. it was what it comes down to if, for if a you lot look of people. At the numbers, LeBron has just been incredible, playing in all 82 games as well this season. I mean, he was fantastic. I know They're we talk, tight. Those are close. Uh, yeah, I know They're we talk very, about very January as well, where LeBron had this sort of down month where he was still incredible. But James Harden, and I'll admit, I was one of those ones who was a little sceptical coming into the season of whether or not he and Chris Paul could work together. But it's worked perfectly, yep. just as Daryl Morey envisioned. So uh, James Harden has shown that he can be the man, but he can also defer to Chris Paul when needed. It's been so beneficial for the Rockets. Yeah, this is the third time I've voted for James Harden in one of our starties. I'm happy to see that you guys are finally on board with me <laughs> and I actually agree. Uh, it's a great year for Beards. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, they're the best offense. They're the best team. They've been the best team the entire year. He's the main reason why. He's maybe the hardest guy to guard in the league, period. So yeah, James Harden is it for me, though. You got to give props to LeBron being like, I think it should be, in the, be me. And then everybody's like, hey, wait, yeah. <laughs> maybe it, it should be LeBron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He makes a good point. I right. don't think this will be a unanimous decision That's with right. the, uh, the right. real hardware for MVP. All right, we got to take a break. One more break, in fact. But when we come back, we're going to count down the top 10 plays of the year. It's the best top 10 in sports. Is it only 10? No comment. Welcome back to the Starties, where we're suddenly standing. We're not sure why, but it's fun. The awards have been handed out, and one honor remains. A place in the Starters' Top 10 Plays of the Year. The best top 10 in sports. So let's start at number 10. That makes sense. And we'll begin with Zach Levine. Oh, yeah. The poster. Great to oh, see him back this Samson. year after the knee injury. Oh, goodness. Get up. Right on Samson, or Swanson, or Swami, or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> At number nine, another monstrous dunk. Same side of the floor here. Anthony Davis. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Getting Ron Baker. Getting Ron Baker so bad with that oh. off arm. Oh. He crushes him in the face. <laughs> yeah, and this is what Ron Baker's face looked like, unfortunately. <laughs> At number eight, James Harden. Drop it, Wesley Johnson. <laughs> Wait, this is only number eight? This is only number eight. Oh, man. What a year we had. You had the drop, you had the stare. No, the licking of the lips and the <laughs> wink. Yes. That right there makes it Yeah, you had the wink and the Yeah, here lick. it comes. Uh. You had the celebration from the bench. Oh. Watch Trevor Ariza. He might still be standing After there. he splashes yeah. this. Here he goes. Bye. Bye, Trevor. What a play. At number seven, Donovan Mitchell had some crazy dunks this year. It was kind of hard to pick one, but oh. we picked the right one. Yeah. yeah. That's a big put back from Spider-Man there. And it always looks cooler because he's oh, yeah. smaller than most guys, but gets way up higher than most guys. At number six, a little defense from Hassan Whiteside Oof. saying no to James. And the stare down. Yeah, a little trash talk as oh. well. Hmm? The two-handed block hitting it <laughs> off the glass. At number five, nine, eight, seven, six. Time ticking down. Wraps down one. Oh. Oh, Not man. anymore. DeMar and one with the dunk going coast to coast against the Pistons. Huge jam. The internet went crazy for that one. At number four, we got two plays from Larry Nance Jr. Oh, wow. He was collecting bodies this season. It didn't matter what oh, oh, Kevin team Durant he was playing one. for. Yeah, here with the Lakers, getting KD. And then traded to the Cavs. So let's go get a plumley. <laughs> oh. Gives him the Sean Kemp. Yeah. Bang, bang. Oh, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> At number three, 
This James Johnson dunk is mean. Oh, man. Getting another dunker in Victor Oladipo. Yeah. Oh. Oladipo goes flying. Yeah. Well, he's a big boy. <laughs> Huge. Good for one of those a year. At number two, two plays from the Greek freak. Ooh. <laughs> he dunked on Baines a lot this year. This was his best one. It's a good one. Crazy oop. But Giannis's best play from the season <laughs> is when he jumped over a man. Oh. Tim Hardaway Jr. He didn't still even doesn't know, know that Tim Hardaway nope. was there. He just grabbed it, smashed it. Yeah, he somehow made that look easy. At number one, we really cheated here, but LeBron had so many plays, we decided to include six LeBron plays, including this no look behind the back through Aaron Gordon's legs. Oh. <laughs> the jelly or peanut butter or whatever they call each other. I don't know, peanut butter jelly. Uh, Torian Prince gets blocked. Oh, the volleyball spike. Straight down. The king does reign supreme over the prince. But generally. she didn't vote for him for MVP. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good it's point. It's true, Kristen, it is true. Maybe because he did things by accident, like, like this oh, one. Man, yeah. <laughs> wow. Definitely not on purpose, nice but finish. still very, very amazing. He also had a beautiful game winner here. I like how we have everything. We've got yeah. no great assists, some man. defense. We've got a buzzer beater. I'm sure the dunks are soon coming. We yeah, should have put his in as well. Wow. Mm. <laughs> holds off Jimmy Next there. Year, right. Two dunks to finish it off in Ooh. year 15. Unbelievable. He was taken off. Oh, he gets the phantom cam. Some of the best dunks of his career this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, easily. For sure. Yeah. Gets Joe Harris here, and then Yusuf Nurkic gets the big man. Oh, oh my oh, God. The sound that it makes, man, is amazing. Oh. Friday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. It's the starters playoff preview where we make our predictions for all eight first round series. That's it for us tonight. Kristen, thank you once again. Thank you for, for hosting. having me. A fifth year, finally the fifth starter. It's too much. <laughs> to be. An exciting evening of NBA awards magic. Have fun, everybody. Drive safe. Cass, take us home. Thank you for joining us. And remember, we are available for the actual NBA award show, June 25th in Los Angeles. Call our agent. Brace the day, people.